Sports Fan Show Cook back in Sports Heat for you, bringing you some Saturday sports action. It wasn't a win, but it wasn't a loss. Last night, the Nanooks ended up tying with the Bemidji State Beavers. The Nooks led 3-2 about halfway through the third period when Tyler Morley connected with Garrett Perry, but Matt Prepovis as he tied the game with 140 to go in regulation for the Beavers. UAF got five shots on goal in overtime, but no, no goals. 30-21 shots on goal advantage went to the Nooks. Sean Cahill made 18 saves. And Matthew Fries also had his first goal of the season in the tie. And the Fairbanks Ice Dogs displayed their defense in the Sadatna Sports Center for a 2-1 win last night. Last time the teams met there, 20 goals were scored in two games. In this one, Fairbanks trailed 1-0 after the first, but got two big goals in the second by Victor Lilligren and Jacob Hetz. And that, proves to be, and that proved to be the difference. Hans Gororski had two assists for the Dogs. Goalie Patrick Munson made 24 saves with a scoreless third period. Fairbanks outshot Kenai 44-25. The Ice Dogs lead the Era Cup Series now 8-1 and can win it outright tonight with a win right before the Christmas break. Today at the E.F. Horton Rifle Range on UAF's campus was day two of the High School Rifle Regional Six Championships. The shooters will complete 60 small bore shots, 20 targets from the kneeling, standing, and prone positions, and 60 shots standing for air rifle. At the end of Friday's action, Lathrop was in the lead with 22, 52 points, 29 more than Hutch. Delta was third, followed by North Pole, West Valley, and Tote. What makes this challenging for the shooters is that a lot of them are also shooting for the Junior Olympics, which is happening this weekend at the E.F. Horton Rifle Range as well. We'll have full results from regionals on Monday. And today at the Big Dipper Ice Arena, West Valley hosted the Juno Douglas Crimson Bears. And with 7-19 in the first period, Ty Profit, he got the first goal of the game. He had he added two assists as well. Gabe Rankin got another goal for West Valley. Five minutes. Wolfpack took a 2-0 lead into the second period. Casey Lewandowski got two goals, and that was from a tough angle. Like I said, he had two goals in the second, 4-0 West Valley, but the Bears would not be shut out. Cole Cheeseman scored on a 4-on-3 power play to make it a 4-1 game, but the Wolfpack answered with two quick goals by Stasi Skorowski and Taylor Gale, who got one in a few minutes later. West Valley had four players with multi-point games, and they roll in this one 8-1. We definitely uh, talked a lot, and that's what helped us today. Is uh, that helped the cycling and everything, getting everybody involved, not being selfish with the puck. It's nice because we don't have to depend on any one player. We can all just send three lines out there to score, and the fourth line scores too sometimes. So that's that's real nice. It's pretty awesome. I mean, we're a good uh, team camaraderie in the locker room and working hard all together, and just getting pucks to the net and scoring goals is fun. So working hard all the time. We came out and we worked hard. That was our. That's the thing I wanted to do. We kind of challenge the guys and let's just come out and work hard um, you know and good things will happen that's uh, I'm pretty happy and sticking with high school hockey yesterday the Tri-Valley Warriors with just nine players and the Hutchinson Hawks they went at it in the Big Dipper Ethan Graham in net for the Warriors he was a warrior making 28 saves in the first period alone but he couldn't make it 29 as Holden McCulloch for Hutch scored which is 25 seconds left in the first period Richie Stickle he sticks with it and he ties the game at one all at a 12:53 mark of the second he had two goals for Tri-Valley but the Hawks would untie the game less than a minute later with a nice goal from Kevin Steffi that would spark a 4-0 run Gabriel Medor put one in from deep after a faceoff win nice shot there Thomas Lee and Alex Marcos will hook up twice for goals, and McCulloch would score again as well. Brandon Rustad had three assists for the Hawks, and Hutchison wins this one 6-2. And following that game, the Lathrop Malamutes got revenge against Juno, who came back to beat Lathrop 3-2 on Thursday. Ryan Ebenal and the Malamutes would not let Deja Vu get them again after some nice saves from Ebenal and Neil Chapman for a scoreless first period. Colton Meyer, he got a power play goal for Lathrop, and then later in the second, Chad Horn, he was scored to give Lathrop a 2-0 lead. The Malamutes led 2-0 going into the third period and lost on Thursday night. And they had the same advantage last night, but Ebenal, he stood on his head making save after save. Meyer would get another goal, and the Malamutes shut out Juno, winning 3-love. Their fourth win of the year, Ebenal had 23 saves in the shutout. It's a, it's a good way to go into the break. So um, we struggled a little bit, giving up too many goals this year, and um, he really did step up today and play a good game. We just kind of kept going hard. We kept trying to keep everybody uh, pumped up the entire game. Uh, our goalie, Ebnall, played really, really good. Uh, couldn't ask for any better play, but it was pretty great. I feel like we, uh, we didn't quit in the third period. I feel like last night, you know, we kind of got to let it go to our heads, and we gave up, and I feel like we kept on constant pressure on this team, and it really helped us score goals and keep the puck out of our end. 
And a couple of quick tidbits of sports news. Former Ice Dog and North Pole Patriot John Fievel is in Italy playing for the U.S. Men's National Team as part of the American Legion Hockey Association and the Winter World University Games. The Iowa State University senior Ford is on the U.S. squad that won his first two games so far over Sweden and Lativa. He hasn't tallied a point for the U.S. team yet, but in 26 games, he's the leading scorer for the Cyclones with 30 points. And another student athlete with interior ties to performing in Italy as well. Senior skier Max Olux of UAF went to Northern Italy right after winning the Nordic Cup to ski for his native German national team in the 26th University World Games. Lucas Ebner of UAA is also on the team. Olex, who is from Aalen, Germany, qualified based on the times he posted in his junior season. Olex skied in the 7.5K Skiathlon Classic and the Freestyle Skate. He'll participate in the, T in the 10K Freestyle Skate this coming Tuesday. The Alaska Sports Hall of Fame announced their class of 2014 inductees this week, and they have ties to the interior. Jeannie Hubert Truax, a former North Pole and Monroe basketball star in the late 80s, will be inducted. She was player of the year from 1986 to 1988. She went on to the Univers University of Miami and finished her career top five in points, assists, and steals. Currently, she is the head coach of the Wasilla Warriors girls team, and she's won three straight titles from 2010 to 2012. Mario Chalmers of the Miami Heat is in the class. He was a three-time player of the year for Alaska while at Bartlett High School, where he won two state titles. The McDonald's All-American won a national title at Kansas and is a two-time NBA champion with the Miami Heat. And for the event, uh, category. The Yukon Quest, the 1,000 mile international sled dog race is regarded as the most challenging in the world due to the weather conditions and distance. It starts or ends in Fairbanks and Whitehorse Yukon every other February. Also making the event category is when UAA defeated Michigan back on December 28, 1988 in a tournament in Utah. The Wolverines won the title that year, but not before the Seawolves beat them 70 to 66. And that'll do it for sports tonight. Thanks for rocking with me for a little while. Holly Siler is next with your full weather forecast, and we'll catch you next time.